Hey guys, a couple of weeks ago I released a video about AI taking over stock photography, which went a little bit viral. It's currently sitting there about 200,000 views, which if you check the rest of my channel, you'll see is quite substantially larger than anything else I've ever released. And there were a ton of comments on that video, ranging from the positive to the negative and the batshit crazy but there were some really interesting comments in there about the capabilities of AI and the impact it's going to have for better or worse on photography both in the commercial sense and the artistic sense and one of the things that people kept saying in that in the comments section was that there was no way that AI would take over because they'd seen the pictures and it was doing stupid stuff like rendering limbs emerging from the middle of people's bodies and uh, giving them six fingers and their faces were all kind of messed up and stuff like that. And I replied to as many of those comments as I could and pointed out that it's evolving rapidly. It's changing day by day. Every week there's some big new announcement about AI. And I said that yes, while at the moment systems like Midjourney are messing up sometimes and doing weird things, giving people extra limbs and stuff, the systems learn. It's machine learning and it wouldn't take long until it was all fixed. And Midjourney now released version 5.1. And what do you know? A lot of the things that people were complaining about have been fixed. So in order to get some kind of benchmark in my own head of how far we've progressed and how far we have to go with these systems, I thought I would try and recreate some pre-existing photographs. <laughs> So here was the process that I followed. I picked a few photographs from Unsplash, where people had generously donated their images for free to the multi-million dollar Getty Corporation for reasons that escaped me, but I used some of those images and I used some of my own. I put those into Discord to have mid-journey look at them. You can use a prompt called slash describe and it will produce four prompt suggestions based on that image that you can then put into Midjourney and it will try and recreate that photo. It did show me that it sometimes takes a little while to get these things right at this stage in the game. In some cases in my testing it got it right pretty quickly straight from the get-go and in others it took a few uh, iterations to get it right. And I have collated all of those images. I've got them sat here in Adobe Bridge. And I thought we could have a look at some of them and talk about how close AI gets. It's the invasion of the photo snatchers. Let's get into it. So here is my first shop. A little photo I took down on Seven Mile Beach of some birds. Let's open up the stack and we can see how Midjourney did. When I asked it to describe this photograph in prompt form, these are the images it produced. Things to look out for in this are the way the light falls in the image, things like the reflections. In the past, it didn't get those right, but if you look at this image, you'll find it certainly is getting them right now. The reflections are pretty much spot on. The way the light falls is absolutely correct. Here's another one. You know, these are pretty sensational, aren't they? The detail in this is amazing. Here's my fourth one. And there's the fifth one. And I really love this last one. The color scheme on this is sensational. We can preview these a bit more. Let's blow these up to full size so we can see them a little bit better. And check out the detail on the feathers on this bird. Look at the detail in the eye. Look at the reflections. Look at the way that Midjourney has rendered this watery, low tide beach area. It's just quite incredible. So there's my original. As you can see there are no processing mistakes 
in these photos. So let's move on to a landscape. I shot down at one of my local beaches, a place called Himes Beach. And here is what Mid Journey came up with. I think this is the weakest of the three. I don't know what the weird white line is down there on the water's edge. Uh, it's quite a strange and obviously generated image. It's quite kind of surreal, almost alien planet like. This one is a lot better, although I would argue that the rocks in the distance there look a bit World of Warcraft, but it's done a sensational job with reflections. Notice how this reflection of the sun is at exactly the right place it's meant to be. You've got the sun in that position on the rock there and reflected sun underneath, and it's done a great job with the sand. And check out those clouds. I mean, they're absolutely spot on. Here's one that I think is caught halfway between the two. You can definitely spot that it's a generative image, but it's done a brilliant job on the sand textures with the sandbars. Uh, and again, the way that the light is reflecting on it and the way the light is not reflecting on the area of sand on the right there where there's no water. So, you know, it's absolutely on the money. So this next shot down at one of the local photographic hotspots, a place called Bombo Quarry. Very famous people travel far and wide to come and take photographs here. Will they have to in the future or can they just use a little two line prompt in mid journey and get what they want well no not at this stage in the game here is what it came up with this looks very very generative i don't think it's done a very good job on the ocean the clouds look a bit weird rocks in the foreground look okay but the ones on the right look definitely a bit world of warcraft and there's something weird going on with the water underneath the sun here there's some sort of weird kind of crackly sort of effect Let's move on to the next one. It's probably the most realistic in terms of the kind of feel of that location, but not at all realistic in its rendering because, you know, it's an inventive image. It's a generative image. It's not working from any plans or anything. And, and this one, it's weird actually because it's done a way better job with those waves. The water doesn't look like some weird kind of crackling effect, and it's done a really good job on this kind of... Uh, long exposure of water down the bottom here interestingly guys i actually licensed this to an advertising company in sydney for use and an advertisement i think it might be going on tv so as you can see this kind of stuff if you can generate this with a prompt it will have an impact on my livelihood and on those of other photographers here's what mid journey came up with and this has done a really good job on the rainbow. As we're going on with the cloud, we've got a sort of contour cloud under the ra a rainbow and contour cloud on the right. So that's a bit strange. But everything else looks pretty good. Here's the next one. Check out that house in the distance. It hasn't done a brilliant job rendering that. There's something weird going on with it. But the road, and check out the road and the, and the grass along the edge here, you know, in this tree, the fence line. Uh, here's the fourth of those, which I think is actually the best. It's done an absolutely top-notch job on the road, on this fence line, on this field here, this little scrub trees over here, little farmhouse in the distance. Now, admittedly, if you scrutinize this, you can look at, uh, get up close and do some pixel peeping, then it's easy to spot that it is a generative image. But images are not viewed that way. People don't pixel peep adverts and stuff like that and blog posts and images in travel brochures. They just don't. And I don't think that anybody would notice that this was a generative image if they were just flicking through a travel brochure and not really paying too much attention to it. And that's the point. I mean, the thing is, it doesn't have to be 100% for these services, but I'll tell you what, even having said that, it's getting pretty bloody close, isn't it? So let's have a look at some different styles of photography now, and we've got this one here. Found this image on Unsplash. Somebody took a photograph of the Louvre and this lady with a red arm umbrella. This is what the full-size Unsplash version looks like, and here is what Mid Journey came up with. Now, if we look 
at the buildings on the left and right in the actual image and the way this pyramid of the Louvre looks, it's done a pretty good job. Most people not that familiar with this area wouldn't know that that has not been rendered completely accurately. Look at the reflection of the lady and her umbrella in those paving stones at the bottom there. Now here's the other one, a bit more stylized this one, and doesn't bear much resemblance to the reality of the location. Now we've got this kind of cobble area and then the pyramid. Here's one with a load of kids playing football on a beach at sunset. Again, this is one that somebody freely donated to the multi-million dollar Getty Corporation on Unsplash. Stop uploading to bloody Unsplash. Highly colourful scene. We've got reflections and stuff that the generative art system will have to account for. Let's see how it did. This looks pretty good. Notice the fact that the children have the correct number of limbs. They don't have arms protruding from their chests, and it's done a great job in the silhouette. And look at the shadows of the children. You know, it's got the ball right, the sun reflecting in there. Pretty interesting, isn't it? And here is one of the other options, slightly more muted color tones. But again, all of these individuals have been rendered anatomically correctly with the right number of limbs. So once you start getting up close with people's faces in previous iterations of these generative systems like Midjourney, didn't do a sensational job on that stuff. So this is the original photograph uh, somebody took on Unsplash. And here is what Midjourney came up with. Uh, it's done a brilliant job on this young woman. The clowns and the crops look fake as fuck, but, you know... Generally speaking, it's a pretty sensational job. Notice the fact that she has the correct number of fingers and thumbs on her hands and no limbs projected from her chest. This one looks almost like it was airbrushed and I think it has got the hand wrong on this. I think there is a finger missing from this. You could argue it might be behind this uh, thumb of hers, but I think it has missed it out and there's something weird going on here with one of these super bulbous fingers and a shorter finger so it's not perfect but compared to where we were in the dim and distant past eons ago two weeks so it's doing a great job with the landscapes it's doing a great job with the people here's another portrait shot again found this one on unsplash uh, a young lady looking over her shoulder at the camera a black and white image looks like it's lit with just one light Here's what Midjourney came up with. This looks very computer generated indeed. Way too kind of smooth and stylized, but anatomically correct. You know, the proportions of this person's face are pretty much spot on. Here is one of its other attempts, some weird kind of flower arrangement going on. It's a striking image, but it doesn't bear much resemblance to the one I asked it to create. Described it with a prompt and this is what it came up with. This one, however, this is really interesting to me because if you look at the skin here, it's given it kind of a patina. There are imperfections, as you would expect to see in any human's face. And it's a really beautiful image it's done. The hair is just incredible. Uh, the muscles in her neck, the look. And here's my final little test shop. Found this interior shop. Interesting thing about this is it looks like it was shot either on film or using something like a Fujifilm film simulation. Uh, we've got this table and chairs, a window, and some sort of environment outside. Let's have a look what it came up with. It's nailed the, the film look, firstly. If you look at that, you can see the patina has a film-like quality to it. The light is falling correctly. The shadows on these chairs is correct. We've got pretty reasonable looking paraphernalia here on the table. Everything sort of fits in and is correctly proportioned. And here's its other attempt, some sort of city apartment thing with a wooden table here. This teacup looks a little bit messed up. Looks like there's some sort of spoon coming out of it and weird looking jug here. But first glance, you wouldn't notice any of those things. So this is where we find ourselves, guys, at this uh, stage in mid 
2023. I said that these systems were evolving quickly and we had to make sure that human creativity was protected because the systems would get better and better. And lots of people didn't realize that and were making comments about the protruding limbs and the extra fingers and all that kind of stuff. And you can see from these examples I put on the screen here that it's evolving so, so fast. I personally think these images are amazing, but they are not photography. They should never, ever be lumped together with photography. Photographs are taken with a camera with a lens on it by a photographer in a real location. These are computer generated images and the two things should never be lumped together. Not in a stock library, uh, not in a competition, not in any way, shape or form. As someone who is a passionate photography hobbyist, and somebody who has also earned a bit of money from photography, I think we need to protect this art form. As a society, we need to find a way to differentiate the photographs from the stuff that is computer generated. It's absolutely crucial that we do so, not just from the perspective of artistic integrity, but also if we're talking about stuff like news gathering and events and stuff like that, it's important that we are able to prove that a photograph is true because these images are bending the reality. If you look at these images, you would never know that many of them were created with a generative prompt. And that's going to have a long lasting and massive impact on life and on society as we move forward. And we're just in the early stages of this technology. So who knows where the fuck it's all going to end up. And that'll do us for this little video, this little benchmark of where we stand with these generative systems. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more general photography related content. Until the next time, guys, ta-ta.